Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark, and we have a book marketing guest today. So if you're someone who's looking forward to marketing your book or you have a book already out, our guest could be a great asset to you. So before we get started, I want to remind you to go over and grab your free subscription of Breakthrough Author Magazine. You can find that at www.breakthroughauthormagazine.com. And we have a new course coming up, and it's called, uh, you can find it at AIAuthorAcademy.com, AIAuthorAcademy.com. And the reason I'm telling you about this is we have a system that we have been using with AI for quite a while now for platform building. And we're ready to share it with you guys to make your platform building a little bit easier, to make your marketing a little more saucy, and also just getting your book out there with the right keywords, with everything you need to be successful. AI is literally a garbage in, garbage out system. So we're going to be focusing heavily on those areas where you probably need to do some avatar tightening in order to get really great results. So once again, www.aiauthoracademy.com. The course is going to start in April, and we hope to see you there. So today's guest is Jill Lublin, and she's an international speaker on the topics of publicity, networking, kindness, and referrals. She's the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals by McGraw-Hill, and co-author of Guerrilla Pub Publicity and Network Magic. Networking Magic, sure I can speak. Her latest book, Profit of Kindness, went to number one in four categories. Jill is a master strategist on how to position your business for more profitability, and more visibility in the marketplace. She's the CEO of a strategic consulting firm and has over 25 years experience working with over 100,000 people plus national and international media. Jill teaches a virtual publicity boot camp and consults and speaks all over the world. She has spoken to many stages with luminaries such as Tony Robbins, and Jill also leads a conscious kindness community. So you can visit her uh, publicitycrashcourse.com and there's a free gift over there or go to jilllublin.com. So stay tuned for our interview with Jill. Welcome, Jill. It's so great to have you here today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here, Julia. Thank you. I did because we're going to get down and dirty today and really talk about are you being realistic about your book and how it fits with your business and how you've built your audience and all those things that you and I both know authors come to us and they, they give us these grandiose plans that we kind of sit there and go, yeah, we might not be a good fit because I can't achieve that. That, that was your work. You should have done in advance. So talk a little bit about that because I know you are you get the same thing I do. What does that look like when people connect with you and start talking about that? Mm, well, a couple things. One is, listen, my friends, I know you want to sell books. That is the point, yes, of your publicity campaign. And that's what we're talking about here today is publicity. And let me share with you, I got four books. And the more publicity I got, the more books I've sold over 80,000 of guerrilla publicity, you know, profit of kindness, for instance, we're in uh, random acts of kindness week. And we're talking about kindness in that way. So one of the things I'm really big on is enter your publicity to talk well uh, let me just say solve problems in the marketplace and book sales will naturally happen listen one of my clients following the system and a greater message instead of i got a book i got a book sold 42 books in a 15 minute podcast because she hit the right message so this is something i want to uh, tell you about that the media as much as we are so proud of you and yes we're happy and yes we want you to have a book out and that's a really great key and instrument to create more publicity really what the media wants is you to be a problem solver you to be an expert so that they're saying yes to you because you're the expert who has the book so that your position is elevated Absolutely. And uh, you guys, I'm going to give you an example here of something that happened that it kind of kind of going a little negative, but I, I, I would love to hear what Jill has to say. I referred one of my clients out for a podcast and the podcast host came back and said, she needs training. 
And I was like, what happened? And she said, all I would ask her questions about the book and she would talk about the book, but then she'd say, well, you have to read the book to get the rest. That is not what you do. That is not it's, the right answer. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and please send her over to me. I'll help her out. But here's the thing. Um, when you're on a podcast, so here's the general rule. You do repeat your book title at least three times. And here's how you do it gently. You know, in my book, Guerrilla Publicity, I give you the solutions for getting out there without having a big budget, because it's important as an author to look, you know, well prepared and, and have the right words to say in an interview. Okay, now you just work it in, right? Um, and one of the things that I find authors do this a lot is they'll say in my book and they won't say the title. <laughs> so <laughs> what you're going to learn to do is in my book, Guerrilla Publicity, da 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 da. Well, now, here's another, uh, this is a little advanced, but I'm going to teach you a shortcut trick, which I love. And you're going to integrate the name of your book inside of your message. Ooh. So for instance, um, I did this with, networking magic, right? I said, if you want to create networking magic, what you do is, boom, got the book title in. That's really fun. And that should be very helpful for some of you. Don't say the whole book title, maybe even just one word, because here's the deal. You know, even at bookstores, they will use two words to find your book. That's why, you know, typically you don't have long book titles. Mm -hmm. and it's more memorable and quick. Uh, now, the subtitle you can have, that's great. You don't need to say the whole darn subtitle anywhere. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it. You just put that title in people's names so they can find it fast. That is excellent, excellent. And I don't know if you do this on your end, but on our end, we encourage our authors to also go get the, the name of the book as a URL. That way yeah. you can send people because a lot of you guys probably don't know uh, some place like Amazon, it's a search engine. So right. if I go and I spell Lublin, uh, you know, not exactly the way it, it is, L-U-B-L-I-N, I, I'm not going to find her. It's looking right. for exact matches. So that's something else they can do as well when sending. So I know you do that for the for the bigger, like we're on a podcast and we're, you know, we're, we're out there and we're doing that three times. How do you manage if you're on TV? Because that is such a small soundbite. Um, you know, you're only you're on for a very limited time and mostly it's the host. How would you position it in, in something like that? Mm, so, um, yes. And, you know, listen, a podcast, 20 minutes um, and and a, a TV show, four minutes, four minutes. Right. And so one of the things is you've got to get right to the point, please, my friends, you notice we got right to the point, didn't we, Juliet? You know, we're, we're no nonsense kind of women. And um, let me just say, you are responsible for your own message as an author. So please get right to the point. So one of the things I'm big on, and I have systems and processes in publicity. I think it's great to have a blueprint and a way to get your publicity done simply. One of my systems is your message. And your message is your key to your success. So one of my suggestions is you look at your message every 30 days. Is it current? Is it effective? Is it right now message? Um, you know, so that if you wrote a particular book about a certain thing, um, there are also holidays that are appropriate. Like one of my clients has a grief book for um, caregivers. Guess what we found out? It's National Alzheimer's Month. She's got to be talking, right? So um, you want to be looking at the holidays that are appropriate for your book, meaning what can you tie into? And it may not be as obvious like, interestingly enough, for those of you who live in the United States, there's Independence Day, same with Canada. What And, and so I turned that into a story called, What Would You Like to Be Free From? Do you know how I got one of the biggest ABC radio stations in Detroit, Michigan, which I happen to be from, but that's not why I got it, because I actually now live in California. I got on the biggest uh, station in Detroit, Michigan, uh, talking about being afraid that we are no longer a kind society. That's how I got the profit of kindness in. That's what I was talking about on July 4th. Let's be free from a nation of hate. 
Let's have more kindness in our world. That was my message. Not, oh, I got a new book out, right? And this is what I want you to all hear yeah. is you've got to take your message and wind it into what's going on right now or fitting into a holiday. Definitely, if I may, Juliet, go to nationaldaycalendar.com. Great resource wonderfully filled with holidays that'll stimulate you and go, oh, I could talk about that. And let me share with you, for instance, I have a divorce coach. She wrote a book. Um, I have her for Valentine's Day talking about how to fall out of love, right? <laughs> so sometimes you can take a contrary position. That works too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. And just along those lines, we just released a book yesterday. We're recording this on Valentine's Day, as you can tell from Jill's lovely sweater, um, that uh, finding finding beauty in your broken pieces. It's a relationship book, but it's a relationship book about you don't have to drag your, your spouse to counseling. It all starts with you and how you heal and change. And so there are a lot of different ways to take that stuff and position it. Now, I think the key there though, and I don't I disagree with me if you don't, if you do, is um, if you're going to change that messaging, make sure it's relevant and make sure it's along the guidelines because you don't all of a sudden want to switch messages. Right. Um, well, when you say along the guidelines, here's what I'm going to say. Listen, you do what works in the media. And, and sometimes, yes, you will switch you will go on another path talking about, for instance, uh, a business consultant I work with who wrote a book on profitability in business, how to have more of it, how to scale. Great. Also has a son who's autistic. On National Autism Month, we talk about that. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And so that's called use everything you've got. If you are a, a Black author, we're going to go after Black History Month. If you are a Hispanic author, we're going in for Hispanic Heritage Month. If you are a, an author who's Christian, let's use all the Christian media. You know, use, ev I call it use everything you've got, all parts of who you are, and that will help you get your books out faster. Case in point, I was in Detroit. I told you I'm from Detroit. I happened to find a good excuse to do some book signings at Barnes & Noble in Detroit. And I, I was signing for Get Notice, Get Referrals. That's my book on McGraw Hill. And so here's what happened. <laughs> I basically pitched the Detroit media, uh, not that I was going and doing book signings, but kind of like a local girl makes good kind of story. I ended up in uh, the Detroit Free Press, a major paper talking about, well, a success story. Now, you know, guess what? If you're an author, you're a success story. And, um, you know, I wasn't even concerned about driving people to my book signing, although it did help. I'll just say it helped. Not to mention, every time you're in media, you are going to see a spike in your book sales. And I mean major spike, plus your website and visit all of your social media, too. And let me let me give you a success formula that I play with on books. And I call it my two by two by two formula. So listen, I'm, I'm a girl from Detroit. I wanted to go to Detroit. I wanted to celebrate with my family. So if I'm going to go to Detroit, I want, to, I want two book signings, which I set up. I want two media interviews, which I promote and pitch, right? And, um, and then I want two speaking engagements. That's always what I'm going after. Now, sometimes I hit it, sometimes I don't. My point is I want you to have goals with regard to your media and showing up. It's going to make a big difference. It is. Okay. I have a, a really tough question for you. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> no, no, because we mentioned the holidays and the thematic, and we ran into a situation last year with a fabulous LGBTQ, I can't say LGBTQ plus book. And um, what it was, was he has a fabulous book, but it's, it's LGBTQ month plus month. And every channel has influencers they you know they're they're taking the big names over the little guy how do you overcome something like that when you know you have a really great product but they're just going after and, and we saw it a lot with women's books we had uh one of our one of our clients lost out to maureen dowd and she was bummed and i was like well i could see why they took maureen dowd over you for the interview so how do you combat something like that or are there ways around it well number one i go local 
Okay, so listen, I, I have a transgender client and one of the things we've done very successfully is is get her into uh, Arizona media where she's from. And mm -hmm. also uh, she has another house in another area. So we, we do both areas, right? And that's actually been quite successful and has supported her a lot. And I particularly think um, your local media is a fabulous source for most of you that maybe you're not shall we say, heating up properly, uh, and particularly when we have a particular month, like Pride Month or whatever it is, right? Go for it and do it a little more in advance. Also, um, I believe in planting flowers for your evolutionary publicity garden. Uh, so you want to be as much as possible looking ahead three, six, and nine months. Uh, so, you know, and sometimes day of honestly, absolutely works, you're good. But mm -hmm. I'm going to say to you, ahead as much as possible three six and nine months it'll make a big difference i could see how it would so what you're what you're really advocating here is a marketing plan <laughs> have well, a, plan. a marketing plan but you know some of you are going to be planning more than others but i will just tell you <laughs> in case of emergency uh pick up the freaking phone can i just say and call your local media and say you know uh today is the start of whatever, Hispanic Heritage Month. And well, I'm a Hispanic author who wrote this great book about blah, blah, blah. And I wanna talk about da, 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 boom, pitch and go verbal, it's okay. You know, sometimes we can skip all the steps and just go straight because here's uh, straight to the media because guess what? The media, I'll just tell you, they need you. They do, I promise. They need your, uh, well, wisdom, your expertise, who you are in the world, they need you. So let's mm -hmm. go. Yes, and don't take that rejection personally. Thank I mean, you. you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of no's, and it's like next, just yeah, exactly. move on to the next. Don't take that really personally. It's probably not you. It's probably not your book. They may have someone else in mind. There there are a lot of things that happen there as yeah. a part of this. Yes. So um, one of the other things that I really wanted to find out about is you have an amazing workshop that you put on all the time. What kinds of things do you go over in there? Because I feel like it's something that that authors should definitely look at um, because you don't have to go out and pay a big publicity company. You can start building this on your own early, even yes. before your book is out. Yes. So here's the thing. I do this um, really get it done publicity breakthrough bootcamp, I call it. It's virtual. It's online. It's short days because i know people are busy so everything i orient toward um wonderful people to get things done and we actually have media there media to hear your pitches up front and connect to you um to as to what works in the in the in these times and to hear your pitches so that is super exciting and it's highly interactive where i have you actually getting your publicity done in fact three documents actually done so people love it and uh it's called the publicity breakthrough boot camp that's that's fantastic. And you guys, you will find a link for that at the end. We'll grab the link in case you want to sign up. So I'm curious about something, too, because we get um, we get people who say, OK, my book is a one and done. You have four books. I think I have nine and a lot of them are fiction. I actually noticed as I transitioned that that first book, I didn't do a good enough job. The second book picked up more audience third book picked up more. The fourth book was a, a big success and people started going back and buying those other books. Did you experience the same thing? Well, you know, uh, yes. My answer, short answer is yes. And here's what's interesting. And same, I could tell you the same thing, Juliet. And with mm -hmm. Gorilla Publicity, my, my really foundational book and first book, this is the third edition. We have now sold over 80,000 copies. I mean, I do practice what I preach. I make sure uh -huh. I'm in the marketplace. Yes, and, you know, I come out of the music business. That's where I actually learn my publicity skills. And, you know, let's take the case of, um, I think it's ooh, Chardet. Uh, um, actually, hang on. Um, who, who did, I've got a fast car, Tracy Chapman. 
Tracy Chapman. Say Chardet, that's like way 80s. We're aging ourselves here. <laughs> yes, but she was wonderful. And I think actually the same thing happened to her. But let's just take Tracy Chapman, who, mm -hmm. um, by the way, put out great albums, came out of the women's music scene, was there for 20 years before she became an overnight success. And, um, and guess what? They released her other albums right after, you know, I Got a Fast Car and all that other stuff hit hit stride so sometimes you will shall we say bring forth the other things you've written yes um as soon as one hits and you start getting publicity or one may hit because it's a very um specific subject area etc so i just i want to say that to all of you that um the power of your message multiplies and it is, um, listen, I'm from Michigan. I can talk about snow <laughs> and think of it like building a snowman or a snowball and it creates and gains momentum, right? As you do with your publicity and then your message can keep coming forth. Yes, absolutely. And and if you look at those, if you're watching on video, the books behind Jill, you know, I can actually see Profit of Kindness. There are days she can promote that. Getting Notice, Get Refers. I mean, as those things come up and people start networking magic, let's talk about power partnership instead of affiliates. There are areas where you can resurface a book um, to, you know, go back in and generate more buzz. So it's not like the book is gone. Um, and, and you just, oh, I've moved on to my next book. There are opportunities. And in fact, we run ads on our old books all the time. Um, so yeah. it just ends up that we, you know, we always have an ad or a free book giveaway on Amazon with one of our books going at, at pretty much all times. Yes. And let me just tell you, whatever book I'm being interviewed, I know I'm talking to authors today. We're going to talk about publicity. If I'm on a show talking about kindness, I'm going to switch orders or get notice, get referrals. We're switching orders here, right? Because mm -hmm. I want the main focus to be there. And, um, you know, also it would say author of. <laughs> Somewhat as a multi- um, multi-book author sometimes it's funny to me when I'm on and being featured for one particular topic because it will say at the bottom you know author of and I'm like so one of the things you have to decide is what's your Chiron the thing at the bottom of right. your TV screen or on a podcast or on a stream yard or anything and mine will say four-time best-selling author why because I earn that you know so if you're a bestseller make sure you say that on there I say four-time best-selling author comma guerrilla publicity if we're just talking about that but I want people to know I got more books you know what I'm saying so uh -huh. That's a that's might be a good way to handle that. And listen, one time authors beautiful wherever you are, it's perfect. Yes. So, you know, getting your publicity out. Yes. So I know you wanted to talk a little bit about uh it's not just about the book, which we've sort of covered, but what if you're a business book? I mean, you have the opportunity to actually go on publicity and, and send people to your website to buy those bigger products and services as well. So how do you, how when you're prepping people for these interviews, how do you do that to kind of connect them all together? Um, so free gifts do that really well, you know, and I know we have that for all of you. Um, the point is you can drive people to your free gift which puts hopefully them into your website, which shows them all of your products and services. That's the way I like to do it. I, I would tell you, make sure that you have a way that every time you're being interviewed, you're also giving away something, which is gonna, it could be a chapter in your book, you know, which makes sure that you drive people. And I know Juliet, you're so good at this, right? With the marketing and you've got to drive people to where you want them to go, my friends. And that's, whether it be a chapter in your book, a, a checklist, a something, 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 depend that it relates to your product and service that then you're driving them to look at everything you offer. Exactly. So that person who just opted into that free gift, you have to keep giving them some good stuff. It's not a one time, go get the chapter of my book and buy my book. Keep feeding them really good material yes. that helps them continue to be nurtured. And, and ultimately, if you have that business, say, oh my gosh, Jill is my person. I'm going to take the leap and jump into the workshop or jump into the program or jump into bigger products and services. Yes. So 
Jill, I know that you have something you want to give us today. Would you like to wrap it up with a, a link to your gift? Absolutely. So what I did was I created a publicity action guide. This is filled with great tips that you can use immediately and actionable publicity specific ideas, as well as things to implement quickly. Uh, so I put it all together in an action guide. Plus this gift also includes a live free interactive on Zoom, get your questions answered publicity uh, masterclass. So that's all included. And you go to publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. That is so awesome. So I forgot to mention, and I'll mention it now for you guys who uh, are listening. Jill also is one of our contributors for the magazine. And I think her first article is coming in June, but we're really excited about it because so many of you, I know we've got the platform building side covered, speaking, all those little things covered, but this is where authors fall off is their book comes out and all of a sudden it drops. It's a thud. They never sell a book again or they sell minimal books. So this is where when you see Jill's advice in these columns, that it could be really helpful to keep that book momentum going after your launch. You so. got it. Perfect. You always want to be thinking ahead, looking ahead. Great advice. Exactly. Jill, thank you so much for taking the time today. Jill, Jill, by the way, is a newlywed. So for her to like say hello to us on Valentine's Day, um, you know, she's got some girl magic to go do here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And happy Valentine's Day. Remember, it's always a good day to spread love. It is. Thank you.